am lucky to most. <laughs> I am welcome to mostly Minnesota music. I've been in the home too long. That's it. I can't even speak. So I'm, we're super excited today. So we normally are on WMCN um, and that's been, we've shifted. We've all shifted um, in this time of pandemic to doing things a new way. Um, and if you're looking at this, you're probably seeing right now, we've got um, six panels, seven people having a discussion right now. So we're going to be talking about the Festival of the Valkyries. I'm very excited about it. Um, my name is Ann Tracy, my co-host. Do you want to say hello, Heather? Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, and we're, so, we're I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I want everybody to get a chance to introduce themselves because I think that helps people connect the voices with the, with the faces. But I, I'm super excited about this event. The Festival of the Valkyries, it is happening this Friday, this, did you guys know it's this Friday? Yeah. So excited. Yay. <laughs> May 1st, it's from 8.30 um, in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. So you've got a, a full schedule and I'm, it's all women and non-binary uh, performers. And I'm super excited. So I don't, I don't we'll just, I'm going to start, I'm really start alphabetically. I'll start with Annie because I always think we should start alphabetically with first name. <laughs> sure. Hi, I'm Annie Fitzgerald. Thanks for having us. All right, great. And then um, we've got Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Morris. Right. Haley and Jess. I'm Haley Rydell. Okay. I'm Jeff Brow. Great. And Vicki. Yeah, I'm Vicki Emerson. Awesome, awesome. So tell me a little bit about how did you, how did you guys come up with this idea? This idea is obviously not something that you've just started in the last couple of weeks. This is a long time of making, so. Vicki, you want to take this one? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, we, we've been friends and colleagues um, for a while, and we had, had been meeting on and off for the last couple of years to try to see what it would mean to build a collective for women in music here in the Twin Cities and for Minnesota. What would, you know, what, what would that look like? What would that be? And um, we talked about it a lot. And then uh, actually within the last few weeks, it really uh, came together because, um, well, we were home <laughs> and we had a little bit of time. And also we took note of all the festivals that had predominantly men as in the lineups. Uh, and, and that's been a problem for a, a while, the in inequality of gender balance on that and race balance. So we, um, we decided that it was time that, you know, it, the times are upon us and this is what we put together and uh, it was a real, I don't know, I want to say it just happened so organically, it all fell into place really easily. And it was all signs pointed to doing a festival of this nature. I think too, um, <clears throat> as we've been working together as a group, um, something, I'm a, a big proponent of therapy, especially right now, self-care. Um, and my therapist keeps telling me that as I talk to her that, you know, no matter all of the big weighty things that are going on in everybody's lives right now with COVID-19 and sheltering in place and all of the unknown, there are still issues that are happening and they're still important. And so, um, I don't know, I think it, it's been giving me definitely, um, I think all of us some purpose, um, and everybody's online right now. So why not? It really, it, 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 I was just going to applaud you guys for, to push through and still do it rather than hold off and wait for a better time or whatever. Yeah, we also so thank I, you. Well, thank you for saying that. I think also too, like we, we have no idea how long we're, it's gonna be, um, you know, a lot of us are musicians as well and play out and, you know, we don't know how long it's gonna be until we can be in rooms with people playing music. So, you know, waiting doesn't seem like a good idea. I also think it's kind of a beautiful moment in time to be able to do something like this because if this wasn't happening to get these uh 25 people on a stage on one day like this would have taken quite a few years and it's taken us you know six weeks to pull this 
less I was than, even less than that. I mean, like, practically speaking, yeah. because, like, the nuts and bolts of the festival organizing has not been six weeks. We're fast. Exactly. Right. It's been, like, you know, maybe a week and a half, two weeks of that. And then, you know, getting all of us around things collectively um, with image and branding and everything, that's taken a little bit of time, too. But we pulled this together. And in any other situation, that would have taken years to get together and pull together. So it's really this beautiful moment um, in this tragedy um, that we're working in. And I think it's kind of amazing. Well, yeah, not only to get all the musicians to be able to do it, but to know mm -hmm. that there are going to be people out there who are at home and will be able to watch it. And you know, you know, yeah, there's an, there's going to be an audience. Yeah, I think there's like a, a bit of a gift in it. Like if we were throwing our very first festival, there would be like a giant dollars question and like the logistics and the liabilities, we would have to, like we're able to pivot into this in a way that's like, it's risky of course, but it's like this beautiful risk and it's an acceptable risk, you know, and then we'll get to the bigger, the bigger bakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is fantastic. You say, this is a, it, when you think about it in that way, what, an awesome way to build up an audience. I mean, individually and collectively, you all have audiences. I mean, we're talking about some of the, you know, the, the top performers in Minnesota, I think without a doubt. I mean, uh, you all have a great following, but to build up a following for a festival like this, yeah, you, you've taken away so much of the risk of it. I just think it's like... We, we're today is Tuesday, I think. Hard to know um, for folks, <laughs> folks who are listening to this later. Uh, yesterday it was beautiful. It was sunny. I, uh, you know, I walked all day long. I went to Como. Today it's rainy and horrible. It's you know, horrible. when you run a festival, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge Absolutely. difference. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I mean, I just think never mind the cost, but also just those those factors that you can't. Um, and I. If, in, in my day job, it comes up a lot too, that all of a sudden you've removed the barrier of, of distance. Mm -hmm. yep. And to a great extent, you've removed the barrier of time. Will you be archiving the conference? I guess is my next question. Yes. yes. So I, you know, you can be anywhere, anytime. You know, I, I, I think that, that that's so amazing. And then you get rid of factors like the, the weather. Right. And it's mm -hmm. free. So it's, you know, the, Accessibility, accessibility component is taken care of as well. It's accessible to almost everybody. Um, so that's been a really, as long as you have Facebook. I don't even think you have to have Facebook. I mean, I think if you can just watch, you can't like, you need an account to comment, but Facebook does let people view things even without an account. So it really is, I mean, it's you internet. need a, internet. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I do like the fact that you can comment. I'm sorry if that did not catch everything I said. I said I do like the fact that it lets you comment. I'm not a Facebook, so I don't know if this is a normal thing, but how would that, are you commenting after people are playing or how is that set up for people to interact with? Time, correct? Right? So it's in real time, yeah. Facebook Live is actually, um, it's kind of fun that way. It makes you feel like a tiny bit that you're interacting with an audience in real time because people are commenting as you're playing and, and they, the, all the comments come as, as you're singing. And the, I mean, they're fun to read, but also a little distracting. I always like, <laughs> I totally mess up my songs because of it, but I'm so happy to be in like interacting with people. And, and then when it's, when it's really working well is when strangers are interacting with each other in your feed. Yeah. Oh, heart filler. Mm -hmm. As an audience member, um, so I'm the only one in the group who's not a working musician at all. And as an audience member, I think that is such a brilliant aspect of all of the online concerts when you're interacting with people that you know are watching at the same time, your friends and strangers, and you're having conversations on these live streams while the person is performing, it makes you feel more present, almost as if you were actually at a live performance in person, in real life. That's really cool. 
our friends are always joking about getting the waitress over here to get another drink and help. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is terrible. <laughs> well, what's nice is you don't have that 6'2 football player standing right in front of you. Yes. Love that. Love that. Yeah. That is my, my lot in life, always. <laughs> and there's always a chair to sit in. Yes. Yeah. Your feet get tired. <laughs> no one's no one's making cappuccino in the back with like a no. oh, just as you, you finally hit that perfect note. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's true too. You, know, you do bring up an interesting point, and I, I, I have I've been on webinars for years, for many years for for training, and it's when you're doing training for things, you do do things very differently. Do you perform differently when you're doing it? When it's, on the one hand, the, the interaction is so different because it is more intimate. Nobody will ask you a question when you're in the middle of a song playing at a gig, you know, the live gig, like, oh, hey, that's my favorite song. No, you know, people just don't do that. So you've got that, that intimacy right there in front of you, but, but it's not in real life. You know, they're not standing in front of you. It must, how, how does that feel? I it's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I feel like the more live streams we do, the more you kind of get a little bit more comfortable with it, and it becomes a little bit more normal. But I just don't think like the sharing of energy in space with other human beings is just like it's the best part. And so I think that that's always going to be something that's missed. But it does feel um, hopeful while you're doing it that at least you're doing what you can to connect. Yeah. It's, kind of it's, pretty, weird, it's pretty weird to like finish a song. I'm lucky that I have two other <laughs> people that live here that are sitting in front of me to like acknowledge when a song is finished, but it's still pretty weird to finish a song and then just silence. Yeah. And then you just talk to a screen. It's, it's still very fun, but it's, definitely strange. It reminds me of all those gigs when I first started out in New York City where nobody was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. the feeling that I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, tell us a little bit about the festival itself. You've got sort of conference, more conference stuff in the morning and then moves into a, a concert. Yep, we're starting on Zoom in the morning. Um, there is on our website and Facebook and Instagram, there's links to um, register for the Zoom um, portion in the morning if you would like to be included, especially in the Q&A portion um, of the panel. You'll be able to ask questions at the end. Vicki is gonna be moderating that um, with our panelists. Um, so the day is starting with um, a dance party in the morning with um, DJ Michelle B. <laughs> Um, and then followed by um, Heather Korndorf, who um, owns Moxie Movement Studios in Minneapolis is, um, what are we calling her again, you guys? Uh, she's like uh, the opening ceremony in Queen Witch. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yes, awesome. that's happening at nine o'clock. And then the panel starts at 9.15. Um, the panelists include Grace Hall from First Avenue, Becky Hoffman, um, who's an artist manager in town for Dessa and Jeremy Miser Smith and the New Standards, Ellen Stanley of EFF, excuse me, EFS Publicity, who also hosts um, KFAI's Women Folk and is a friend of ours. Um, all of these are friends of ours, obviously. Yua Vang from City Pages, Shelly Mueller, um, and then DJ Michelle B will be a part of the panel as well. And then um, from the panel, we will also be streaming, right? Is this right, Jess and Haley? We're yeah, going to be Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're be streaming the panel um, from Zoom to Facebook. So people will be able to see it there as well. Nice. Um, but if you do want to interact in the Q&A, be sure to sign up. Um, and then music starts at 11, right? Andreas. 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 Andreas Swenson. How did I forget that? That's like <laughs> very exciting. Um, yeah, so then we have a keynote speaker, Andreas Swenson, who um, is just amazing and um, is uh, an author and a host um, at The Current and just really wonderful human. Um, so she's doing that and then music starts. Great. At 11 on Facebook. On Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook. When that goes until what time, gals? Uh, that goes on Facebook um, until, nine. until nine. And then uh, Shannon, DJ Shannon Blowtorch will be doing a dance party 
on Zoom, but I believe we're also going to be streaming that as, as well on to, to Facebook. So, and still, yeah. we'll close down the night. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Nice. Nice. Coffee. And the line, I won't, I won't ask you to go through the lineup because you, I, do you have 20, I mean, it's a lot of performers that you have. 26. 26? Oh. Yeah, 26 total. Amazing. How did you, how, how did you compile that list? How did you, how, how did it you was do so that? Much fun and we, the thing about this that I keep thinking, like when I look at how awesome our list is, we absolutely could have done two days to three days to five days of like equally awesome yeah. lineups. Like there are, it was a really hard like and easy thing at the same time to come up with this. Uh, to come up but with this lineup. Yeah, but also that's so inspiring to see how many amazing women are working in yeah. our scene. For real. Yeah. yeah, so we really, um, in full transparency, I think that was another thing that was really important to us, transparency in festival curation, because so many times, and, and what the intention <laughs> was behind it, so many times this is where, um, you know, we all get left out of those of those bills right um how were those festivals put together so we made a statement um when we were doing our curation about our intention to be really transparent uh so we put together we called together this very 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 long list and we also put a call out for people to submit um because we wanted it to be accessible to everybody and open to everyone and also to show that we're uh, creating a community and there's so many people out there that are a part of this community and be really intentional about that and also showcase that there are a lot of women out there playing music not just a few but and, a lot. Lot. <laughs> and every every identity yeah yeah so we wanted to get as much diversity as possible yeah from in genre and race and sexual identity and gender identity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we did a pretty good job. Well, I applaud the process. I'm a I'm kind of a nutcase for transparency in government. I don't know if you all knew that. I spent a lot of my time doing, but I do spend a lot of my time doing that. But I, I think that that's fair. I mean, when it, transparency is everything. I mean, I, I just yeah. think it, it really is. I mean, that, that's how you know that things are fair. That's how, if, if somebody really wants to be at me, if this is the first inaugural, you know, if this is, you're going to do it again next year. And someone says, I, now I know how I can get on that list. Now I know how. And the list of performers that, that even applied or showed an interest or that you were interested in, that in and of itself is so valuable. You know, as you say, yeah. just the volume of it, but actually to say, oh, okay, this is, this is great. And I say one of the, I, I love a festival that has, you know, multi-genre, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, I think one of the, what, uh, was the, uh, was it the best, or the best band, something at First Avenue where they had a, and I'm, you guys can't see this because we all see different things on our screen, but I'm looking at Heather, uh, went to the, it, was, it wasn't the best new band, but I mean, hip hop is not normally one of my top, you know, I mean, I, I like it well enough, but we saw a nerdy play That's and so I, great. you know, and it really, I went for a Loki spot. I went for a lot of other performance and I was like, Oh, I, you know, you like to be blown away by someone that you're like, awesome. I not, I would never have just gone into that show for no, you know, uh, of my own devices. And it, now I'm a huge fan, you know, I, to, to have that opportunity to introduce people to new people, to, you know, to new performers, new to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And sorry, Anne, go for it. No, I was just gonna say, and I think sometimes, and I, you know, I, I like a lot of different kinds of music. I love, I love me some Americana. I see a lot more hardcore punk and noise than you might know about, you know, I, I love that genre, but we, we, we do kind of get silent because there are only so many nights to a week normally. <laughs> you know, and again, that, that's the beauty of this is you can stuff so many nights into one. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, you know, thank you for letting people step out into different genres. I, mean, I think that's in, in um, all different walks. Yeah, Sarah and Vicky put together Apple Music and Spotify playlists. And there's, it's so fun to listen to um, just all of these incredible artists and just the, the diversity in genre is it, it's awesome. But it's all Minnesota, which is yeah. Lovely through line. 
I think another benefit of the live stream fest and like doing it in this way and the that like people are going to be able to feel the genre diversity is as an artist, I've kind of felt like with the live stream shows, like they should be shorter, like they benefit from being shorter than your average set would be at a restaurant or a bar or at a club, like whatever. So the sets are pretty short. I mean, it's only about 20 minutes per artist, correct? So people, you know, you're going to be going from like country to, you know, rock to classical to pop, you know, very within an hour, you're going to get, you know, a taste of all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to put not two like artists together so that it's yeah. a constant. It's like a salad just, bar. It's like a musical salad. I'm going to say a buffet. Okay. <laughs> I, I love that the comparison. My, my sister, my sister eats very healthily, and I don't. And we'll go to a we'll go to a, a buffet. I would never go to a salad, but I'd go to a buffet, and we'll look at our plates, and we'll have nothing the same. <laughs> and she'll always say, look at what Ann has. And she thinks that's good. And she's so wrong. <laughs> Everybody can have what they want. Well, I mean, I just love that. Yeah. From the transparency to the curation uh, of introducing people. So, so I'm going to remind people, this is Friday, May 1st, 830 in the morning, early risers. Good. Yeah. good to, to, to 10 o'clock at night, if we include um, yeah. Shannon Blowtorch. So that's, that's amazing. Can I, can I ask one question? Sorry, I'm totally interested in to know if you sort of have a plan of the discussion or the, Vicki, you have a sort of yes topics yeah. that you want to dis or touching on before. Sure, the panel you mean? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, so we really, I mean, it's funny because I only really narrowed down what I was gonna talk to people about. We, I wanted to at least address each panelist individually because um, they all bring such a really cool perspective, especially I think for artists um, who wanna know more about booking, it's interesting to talk to you know people at First Ave and the Ordway who are total pros at that. You know, um, and then, I mean, I really started with this like macro, view of it and then the two days ago i finally got down to some uh shall we say micro issues <laughs> although they are pretty big <laughs> um you know we're asking the booking not about like how do i get booked at first ave but more like how are you booking does gender play an issue does race play an issue you know well how are you choosing you know really at, you know how do, how does a how does an artist who identifies as a woman stand out in a male dominated field how do you know how do you get those opening spots how do you get that main stage when you're up against such um, you know so many so many men and also like with Ellen who, who uh, has publicity and you as and also a journalist is like how how are how is press taking on are they being more progressive in writing about women or are they still you know just write about mediocre white dudes all day you know this is it's a thing and so i want to know because they're doing this every day you know are you seeing progress how can progress be made what can we do as artists to really uh be an advocate for ourselves and an activist to get more women in press uh uh in online and on, in ink. And then um, with Becky, she's a manager. It's, um, again, it goes to the competition fact. It's like, there are so many men, how does uh, a, an artist that identifies as a woman, how do you stand out? How do you get on somebody's radar to be a management? As you know, management can really propel a career forward in ways that as an independent artist, it's hard, nearly impossible. So uh, then the entire panel is um, more what can artists do during this time of COVID-19 to move their career forward? You know, it's a new frontier. Are there creative ways? Uh, you know, I, I am friends with some artists who are, who are just like, I don't want to do any of this live streaming. I'm upset. I'm afraid. I'm scared. 
I'm depressed. You know, how, how do you reach some of those folks or how to, how, and to, to maybe ease their fears or help guide an avenue forward so they don't feel so alone? And then uh, the final thing is uh, women supporting other women. Like, have you seen it work? When it works, why is it working? Have you seen it not work so well? How can we not do those things? So that's, that's gonna be some of our conversation. I think that's awesome just, yeah, for people to hear it from those people in the industry and have it be honest and use it for themselves. So thank you. You're welcome. I think I'm really that, about it. I think one of the cool things about this panel is, um, you know, we have some musicians up there um, for a musician perspective, but really hearing from uh, the people who are holding some power um, and making decisions is really important. Having the discussion about this male dominated industry and when you don't identify um, as male, right? And you identify as she, her, or they, them, how do you work within that field? And how are you being perceived in the industry in, with the people who are holding the power? Um, so hearing from people who are making those decisions, that's where the change really happens. I think that musicians, are, as we're showing, there are so many musicians out there that could be playing that are so talented and they are hardworking and working their, their butts off to get their music out there. But are they being placed on those stages and why not? Or, or why? You know, what, what are some people doing and some people aren't doing? Or, you know, what are, the, what are those conversations around that from the industry side? <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I mean, I think I, I, for, it's in terms of are they are they getting the radio play? Are they getting on the stages? Are they getting and th this is such a funny time because it, there's just been such an apple cart turnover of of everything of everything these days. Um, you know, like back in the olden days, and I mean, when I was a kid. You know, you always get free, you know, walk out of First Avenue and you could be tickets, you know, a stack of free tickets to the next shows you were going to go to. You know, everybody made all their money off of, of recordings. In comes Napster and that's a game changer to the music industry like nobody's business. And now this, you know, so then you, I presumably you try to make as much money as you can off the merch and the live performances. And now you've got this coming up. Mm -hmm. It is a, um, in many ways, it, it's a sign of the resiliency of the art and of music itself that, it, because this will give rebirth to, to something new. Um, and if it does, like what we talk next week, next week, we're all talking again. And how would you, we knew this was a success because how will you define success after the fact of this festival? Oh, it's already a success. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that there is, I think, for myself, I all I do already see it as a success just that we were able to, you know, assemble these people together and and I think the first indicator of it for me was the day that we announced it, like right away everyone else was sharing it, you know, so it was it was immediately many hands make light work and that's like the dream of the overall dream of the collective right and so to see that happen day one was so beautiful you know like we put it out kind of like here you go and then everyone else is like ah, which looks good with my fan right <laughs> um so i mean i think for me that was like the first indicator that this is i mean it's going to be a success i just know that you can already feel such community building around it too like yeah. to just go off of what sarah just said too we had emails from people that first day we announced saying how can i help i want to you know and so like you said like the collective is building itself, which is the dream. Yeah. 
So, um, and we're super lucky too. We should probably mention all of our sponsors. Um, we're very lucky to have the current sponsoring us as a promotional sponsor, First Avenue, which is amazing. They're co-hosting the event, which is just helping us um, with visibility in a really huge way. Um, Christy at Elemental Studio is a freaking rock star genius. Mm -hmm. And she put together all of our graphics has helped us with our website. And she has done all of this. I have goosebumps right now. All of this just pro bono, oh. just helping us, which has been such a gift. Um, so huge thanks to her. Um, we have Moxie, we have EFS Publicity, we have Minnesota Music Coalition, Associated Skincare Specialists, Joy Martin Architecture, Farmers Insurance, Natalie Lyon, is my saying that right? Leon, Lyon? Lyon. Yep. Lyon. Lyon Agency, um, Trinity Exteriors, and then we have been so lucky. Vicky really has taken it, and Vicky and Haley and Jess have really stepped up um, in an amazing way and contacted a bunch of people, and we're really grateful to be able to offer the artists uh, for their 20 minutes set a guarantee um, on top of whatever they're going to be making via PayPal and um, Venmo uh, during their sets, which, you know, artists are like, they're struggling. We're struggling right now as artists. Um, so it feels really, really lovely to be able to do that. Nice. Nice. Well, that's a, a good transition to, and to remind folks that the show is on, on Friday, Friday, May 1st. Friday. Yay, May Day, <laughs> Friday, Friday, from 8.30 in the morning to 10 p.m. at night. The morning portion will be on Zoom, and if you want to participate, um, and I, when we're at, as we sign off, I'll I'll flash to to your logo so people can find you online looking for a Festival of the Valkyries. But sign up now if you want to be a part of the Zoom portion of the morning, which is more conference oriented with speakers Andrew uh, Swenson and the panel Vicky that you just discussed, which I think will be fascinating. Will be fascinating. And it's all and it's all free. We just oh, need people to sign in so we can send you the Zoom link. That's 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 yeah. the only thing when we when we say sign up, it is it's totally free. We just we just need you to be able to sign in so we can send you the information so people can log in. Amazing, amazing. So then after that, and you told me the time is it eleven o'clock that things will transition. It, it, the, everything will be available. It's on on Facebook Live as well. Right. The interaction in Facebook Live from with the the Zoom portion in the morning will likely be minimal. People, I'm assuming, can post comments, but the, but the Zoom conversation will happen outside of that. And it is free. It is free, but people have an opportunity, uh, and Annie, you alluded to this, to, 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 pass, to pass, put a tip in the hat. Yeah. And will you, just for folks who, that's new for some folks, I, it's just part of a, it was just part of a, an event where they just didn't know how to do it. So we, it's probably it's, it's important for people to know how to do that so if somebody doesn't mind just taking a minute to talk just a little bit about how that works we totally like we're very passionate about our artists getting paid as we've announced each artist we've included their payment info on their graphics to make it as easy as possible um, for each artist they've provided a venmo handle so you would need to have a venmo account to pay them but you can just like mine is at Sarah Morris Music, it would be like as simple as typing that in and then just giving me $5,000 million, you know, like something like <laughs> no big deal. But so every artist has that. <laughs> You've reached your daily limit. Yes. Um, and then most artists also have a PayPal. So, and PayPal, I think most people have some experience with PayPal. So at this point, that's the only way that the um, artist can receive direct fees um I, yeah so we okay. need those two electronic sources great so if you don't have a venmo account now's a good time to get one it's a good time you don't want to touch cash anymore everybody like oh, get no. a venmo it's very yeah. much so yeah and if that if <laughs> venmo seems too scary paypal will work with many mm -hmm. so that that is a nice way to show your appreciation to help um to help musicians women musicians women identifying musicians non-binary musicians um to for this day and moving forward moving forward so that's that's great so any parting comments well, thank you for having us yeah, yeah. thank you so thank much. You so much thank you for doing this i just i mean i know i've talked with most of you individually before i i just think it's important to lift women up so whatever we can do i know heather and i normally have a radio show and we 
try to try to play women music whenever we can. We pick a theme, you know, and and have different musicians on. So I I, I think it's important. I think it's um, from an audience member, it's nice. It's it's great to have the diversity. It's great to have the diversity. You know, I, I've been to some of those festivals where it's one guy after another after another. There's there's nothing more heartening than saying, oh, I hear a pretty voice. I hear, you know, I, I hear a dusky voice. I hear a voice, you know, I, I hear I hear someone that sounds different than the rest. So, I, I, I would love to say one thing, if possible. Part of our mission too is is not only to lift women and women women identifying. Um, humans up but also we are looking forward to finding our allies in men yes. as well and right. people men that are interested in you know turning taking this this issue and kind of turning it around and looking at it and and um you know helping with that too so we're really looking forward to that piece as well as we kind of move forward as a collective that's an essential piece that's an essential piece. It's a it's a lot easier to open the door from the inside than to pull from the outside. So any support that you can get from the insiders opening the door for you, I think, is fantastic. And I should also say that there is a great diversity of of everything on this. Uh, you know, uh, of of ethnicities ethnicities of backgrounds. Some people who were born in Minnesota, some who weren't, and you know, just in genre and everything. So, thank you very much. I'm gonna as I said, I, what I'm gonna do just for the last last couple seconds here is I will share my screen. I've got your, your logo so people can see it. So people will recognize it. People will know where to go, but thank you all. I look forward to seeing you on, on Friday. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank thank you. Oh, yeah, all week I've been sharing screens. I may or may not be doing this right. So. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Thank you so much. Thanks.